Hi there, this is Ian Wright, and I'm just going to talk about something a little off track today, um, which is something called takotsubo, cardiomyopathy, or broken heart syndrome. Um, actually, I just want to mention about the podcast that I kind of do <clears throat> one or one or two podcasts a week on a variety of subjects, and um, they're accessible on the dynamics of stillness.com website or through the Facebook page. Um, and I must have done verging on a hundred podcasts now on, on huge variety of subjects around health and well being. And, um, my PA was saying to me that I think there were nearly a thousand listens to last week. Um, which completely amazes me. And it amazes me when people come into my practice and say, oh, I was listening to your podcast on XYZ and found it very interesting. I'm thinking, what, you listen to that? <laughs> anyway, it surprises me. So I, I'm continuing. The reason why I actually started doing them is when we're practicing, when I'm working, it's quite, we tend to be quite quiet and it's nice for kind of concentration and how it works. And I don't get time to discuss things and talk about particular issues or give people particular meditative processes or things to do I just we just don't have time in the session so I that's why I started doing them actually and I would give I'd send out a podcast or a, a, a some to somebody and then we just put them up on the website and people have liked them so much that um, we've carried on and also a lot of it is about um, meditative practice which I think is, is a hugely important part of what I do and what I teach and it's just developing some things because I, I strongly believe that everybody should have some kind of practice for themselves and as we go on I'm going to do a lot more work on those subjects and I've got a book called The Dynamics of Stillness coming out in October about that and I'm going to do an online course with that which I'm setting up at the moment. Anyways back to broken heart syndrome. This is a a, there's been some research actually that came out today and this is what's got my head into this a little bit um, out of Zurich and it was in the European Heart Journal and they were saying this this cardiomyopathy and it's called Takotsubo because that is the name of a Japanese pot um, that it was named after in terms of its shape so if you look at a scan of a heart what happens is that all of the heart muscle just locks up it literally, the whole thing just contracts. Um, and it has been linked with emotional shock, grief, loss. Um, and say, for example, in the UK, it affects about 2,500 people a year. So it's a very real thing, those that are diagnosed with it. I mean, a lot of people could have been diagnosed a lot more. But the research today has shown them and started, it's the beginnings of something, to show that there may be a link between the brain and the heart. It may be caused by possibly a, an issue in the nervous system, which supplies the heart. Um, what they found was the emotional centers of the brain in people with Takotsubo or who have had Takotsubo um, had less links with the, air, the centers of the brain, the brainstem, which control things like blood pressure, heartbeat, heart rate. Um, there's a decrease in connection. So it's like there's a decreased connection between the emotions and the, and the body, the heart. <laughs> and you could go on to say there's a decreased connection between head and heart, if you think about it. Um, and if you think about this, this is the most... We know, we know what heartbreak feels, <laughs> you know... Um, Everybody, actually, who's an adult in this world has suffered pain, grief and loss. It is, it is our human condition. Um, but we're not necessarily very good at dealing with it. So it's interesting that this is a medical um, diagnosis of something that we instinctually know, but it's not put down to it. And I have a very personal um, experience of this which I want to share with you because it may be helpful um this happened about 12 years ago to me and um 
was going through uh, I was going through the processes or the initiations of a very difficult breakup with my first wife, and you know we'd reached a point in our relationship where we tried everything, but we couldn't go on. But we had three young children, and for me, what seemed to trigger something was I I knew that herself and myself had to break up as we reached the end of the road there was no way around it but we had three children and I couldn't I couldn't correlate those two things I you know I, I couldn't break up we couldn't break up a family between us we couldn't break this family. it was very very hard to break up this family um but me at the time you know I was I was very good at staying strong holding it all in not looking after myself, caring for the rest of the world, but no no self-care at all. Anyway, I end up in hospital with cardiomyopathy. Interesting, and I didn't know this syndrome existed then, and I only just kind of started thinking about it now. Uh, the, the excellent cardiologist um, called it a perfect storm. I mean, I was very ill. I had 15% heart function. Um, I was in hospital. I was very, very ill. I mean, this is a long time ago now. Um, anyways, I, I recovered fully. Six months off. My heart's 100% normal now. You know, they, they did um, two echoes, which they showed me. One of um, my heart at the time, and then one of my heart once I'd recovered. And the cardiologist couldn't, you know, said, we have to send this to Lance. Look at the difference. It's phenomenal. <laughs> you know? But, so I... I know that now at the time I didn't necessarily so consciously put it down to an emotional story. But as I've reflected over the years, those were those emotions and maybe some other things were part of this. And the key point of it for me and what I've discovered and I work with people for many, many years now who've had emotional upset, especially grief and loss, um, key point is to actually allow yourself to sit with the pain and when I was in that situation I did everything to avoid it (laughs) and so something had to give if you think about it metaphorically something has to give um it brings me back I spent some time um in about 1999 living in Guatemala and the Mayans the Mayans had this amazing way of working with grief if they'd lost someone they would wail and scream and cry relentlessly for 24 hours and they would have like released it all and then they could move on but just to allow themselves to fully experience the pain of it it's incredibly hard for us to do actually to sit with pain actually just to sit with it and to witness it is incredibly hard to do Um, it reminds me of when probably 15, 18 years ago now a a very strong memory of um, a time when a young lady, a young woman a Down syndrome lady came into me and her love had left her and she was abandoned and she cried and sobbed and I treated her and we sat there and I couldn't not cry you know, because her heart was broken, but it was so open and there was so much love and healing, almost like this greater love was in the space that it was impossible not to move and, and touch me. Um, I had a, a similar experience with a good friend of mine who'd gone through a big loss recently and it's very powerful. So I spend a lot of time dealing with people with grief and it's a hugely important time to have support in, I feel, um, because it's overwhelming and we can shut down and this Dakasubo is a literal shutdown. It's incredibly rare, but, and it's very dramatic, but we can. Now, you know, for example, when, we've, when we first uh, lose somebody close to us, we go, we go into a process of shock where we kind of either disassociate or shut down. 
um, in relationship to it because it's too intense to feel it, especially if it's suddenly fast. Um, and then slowly that changes into a process and it softens into a process of grief, of grief. I often work with people who get stuck in the shock part of it and we need to move that on into the true kind of grief. And um, it's, you know, the very worst cases of, of, of people when they lose a child or lose someone close to a child is it takes, the process can takes at least 10 years, you know, a loved one is more two to three to go through this whole process. It's, you know, and you could, you could say you never get over the loss, especially of a child. Um, but when we work, when I'm working in these situations, you're there and you sit there and you allow, you just present and you witness and you allow their nervous systems to, to settle. And there's nothing to be said. You don't need to talk to this, but we all know what's going on here and allow their on a cellular level almost, to transmutate this grief. Grief seems to go through every cell in the body. It's incredibly powerful for the body, but it has to move. It can't get stuck. When it gets stuck, people become unwell, and there has to be a transmutation, a process of healing. It's very healing, actually. Um, in, the, in, in, the, in the deep sadness, there is healing, and it's, it's a hugely important thing um, and an important time to be properly fully supported i feel um and in doing so we can come th- we can come through it and come to a place of peace around it okay just a little thing i remember oh gosh i was many years ago now um i was in my early 20s and living in london i was working in kent and i was driving home it was a terrible winter's night it was howling with rain dark and there was a hitchhiker on the road and an Australian and and I couldn't help but pick her up brought her back to my house and uh, gave her dinner my wife and I gave her dinner and a bed for the night and sent her on the way in the morning and um, she left this book and uh, it was a book by a, um, a comic book cartoon book actually it's not comic a cartoon book by an australian cartoonist called lunig l-e-u-n-i-g um and i don't know where the book is now but there was there's one particular cartoon that stayed with me so i found it so profound and so beautiful it was a, a very simply drawn cartoon of a guy on a little tiny, tiny island um and he's lying there with his top off and his heart is open, and his heart is open, like open heart surgery, and it's sitting there in, in, in his chest, and it's very simply drawn. And the birds are pecking at the heart, and the sea is coming up. And, you know, I think the quotation at the bottom is, you know, it's like almost, let, let the salt of the sea come in, and the birds peck at your heart, and, you know, and then it can heal. And that's true, it's that whole being open and let the saltiness and the, the you know, the, the, the natural elements of life come and, and, and allow us to heal. And uh, that's really stayed with me, actually. So I wish you well, and I wish you care of your heart. Hearts are, our hearts are very precious, and uh, I think we need to care from, for them. I wish you well. Bye.